Hello, welcome back to the Perfect Flow podcast. I'm here with Lizzie Ingham, a long, long time standing member of the New Zealand orienteering team. When did you first go to walk? Um, oh, 2011 was the first time running. 2010, I was all lined up to go and got injured a few weeks before, but I went and okay. watched. So cool. So that's that's eight years of experience with the top yep. of the world. And how old are you now? I <laughs> just turned 30. Right. So you've been you've been smashing that out since as soon as you left the the junior ranks. Uh, yeah. I took one year off, went to World Games, and then started hitting up walk. Cool, cool. So Lizzie's from Wellington. You've lived in Wellington pretty much all your life? Yep, up until to you 22. Yep. yep. And then where did you go? I uh, hopped over the ditch and started studying in Canberra and ended up living there for four years. Cool. And then did you come back to New Zealand for a uh, little smidgen in there? Just a month. Just yeah. a month. <laughs> Could have done with longer. Right. Yeah. So I think it's quite likely that there's a lot of young Kiwi orienteers who yeah. have forgotten, or well, the older ones have forgotten, the young <laughs> ones never knew. Yeah, been, and it goes, it goes time. both ways. Cool. Um, you know, the juniors yeah. I coached on my last uh, junior camp in 2010, Yeah, uh, they're all seniors and I can compete against them in the elites now. So it's, wow, I yeah. feel a bit out of touch to be. To yeah. Be and where are you living at the moment? Uh, I've been in Halden for just over three years now. In the very southeast of Norway. Cool. So, yeah, you've been away, you know, almost all that time. So, over the course, um, of that career, if you want to call it, how how have you progressed? Like um, you, you, Canberra is isn't that dissimilar to New Zealand, but being in Halden, I'd I'd say the, up there with the, the, the big, big boys step I've made personally was moving to Canberra. Okay. Um, I'm not, still can't put my finger on what it was, but that year in 2011, I just took a big step up. Um, whether it was, yeah, the change of terrain, change yeah. environment, there's a few top girls yeah. living in Canberra. They do have a fantastic orienteering community. Um, and going from being, yeah, I mean, we, at the time we had a decent field and elite mm. in New Zealand. Um, but the Aussie field just had that bit more depth. Um, suddenly I went from being uh, a surety in the top three to having to really fight. Yeah. And I think just that add motivation. And then, right, right. So uh, that's that's really interesting. So why is there such a strong elite field in, in Canberra? Because it's not the biggest city, is it? It's definitely not the biggest city, yeah. but it's um, definitely very in touch with the, the terrain. I mean, there's yeah. so many parks and yeah parks within yep. the city and the mountains close by and uh, the national parks close mm -hmm. by it's fantastic terrain and just a really strong uh orienteering community yeah cool cool so um we'll, we'll move on to holden because that's a bit of a mecca for orienteering yeah it's uh, that was a huge step <laughs> yeah that's that's getting serious and the terrain is tougher and the people yep. you're racing with over there yeah. They know their terrain really well. You, so, you go from being a yeah a big fish in a small pond to yeah. the, the smallest fish in the Yeah, in just the getting sea. eaten every yeah. race. <laughs> so um, what was the the motivation for Halden specifically? Had you met people um, uh, through, through your experience so far that yeah, you I mean, wanted the, to stay with? I think the driving step was I wanted to move mm. to Europe. I was pretty sure of that. Um, mm. And one of the girls there, Ida, she, she picked up on that. Mm -hmm. She talked to the club and, and they approached me. Cool. And I mean, like probably most juniors yeah. and probably most of seniors in New Zealand, I didn't know much about the, the Scandinavian scene yeah. at all. Yeah. So to be approached by one of the biggest clubs in the world, I mean, there's... Yeah, and that's, yeah. I mean, that's no subjective fact. If you look at the Tio Mila and Eucala results of Halden in the, yeah, the past I mean, few the, years... The, the time they approached me, they were the top yeah the they were the top, top club in europe yeah. and so that's that's a massive compliment i think and you've that's a bit you've, scary <laughs> yeah yeah you've got you had some talent that um, yeah. they saw and took you up and yeah, no, Holden had a really yeah. strong group of girls what was your best place at any of those big relays 
Oh, I mean... Wait, you're in the team. Oh, with me. And t- I've only yeah. ever made the, the second team. Yeah, there we not, go. Not just the... Oh, uh, yeah, you forget that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they came... We won. Won Nukela yep. two years ago. And, yeah, quite a few spots in top ten. We had a yep. third place at TO this year. Yeah. So. And while you were racing in the second team... Yep. What was the best place that the second team <laughs> got? <laughs> you're really putting me on the spot. Um... We haven't cracked the top 20 while yeah. I've been in the team, but we've it's been so in the It's so deep. so many. Oh, I mean, <laughs> so many you're, good you're B teams and C teams, out of, even. What, a thousand teams? Yeah, it's yeah. It's not too That's shabby. fantastic. Oh. Cool. And as an individual racing WAP for New Zealand, yeah. we've had these we've had many years, as you said before. What's been the pinnacle? Oh, what was geez. the best year you had? You, the, you the do best break the top year, 10. The best year all around yep. was actually my debut in France. Wow. And that was um, yeah. top 20 in all of the races. Yeah. And that, that was unbelievable. Yeah. And I, I was watching that live back in yep. New Zealand as a junior. And man, we were screaming. Oh, that was so cool. I, I think one of the pinnacles so cool. would be the, yep. the running first leg of the relay in France. Yes. That was, that was insane. Yeah. And I think I came back in sixth place or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So. Got pulled off for drug testing. Yeah. <laughs> What's this Kiwi doing? <laughs> cool. Yeah, cool. but um, our top result was the year after in, in Switzerland. I cracked the top 10. Yeah, ninth, was it? Ninth. Yeah. Just. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and how does that compare with some of our previous girls? Uh, it's previous top it's girls. the top, top result from a female. It yep. was the top result until a couple of days ago. Yeah, okay. Um, so it was the top. Because I know I we had some quite good girls. I think the top was 10th. Whoa, uh, just ahead. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I'm speaking with New Zealand's best female orienteer ever <laughs> then, <laughs> if you want to go with way. the numbers. <laughs> it's um, just one race. <laughs> yeah, but you've had a rough last last couple of years. Yeah. You've had a really interesting health story. Um, you're still working through through a lot of the... Yeah, I still the, the details yourself working through and the fallout. Yeah. yeah, the fallout, absolutely. Um, do you want to give some of the listeners a bit of a an <laughs> update because you've been over here? We yeah. haven't any been. No one back in New Zealand really knows the challenges that you've been facing. Yeah, and your results coming through at Walk have still been good. And I assume everyone, <laughs> I think a lot of people just think you're fine because the results that have been coming yeah, through the past few years have still been strong. That's... I don't know. I know a few of you will have read my blog, I mm-hmm. guess, and yeah. when I write on there, I like to I talk about the fun parts and the positive yeah. parts and, and that sort of thing, and it's very... Well, one of the reasons I've been quiet on my blog for so yeah. long is that I don't feel comfortable writing, you know, jokey and positive when in the background uh, there's, there's all of this other yeah. it's yeah, really, really not tough stuff going on. true to what's on. going on. And... Um, yeah. And the same goes, I find it very hard to, I, I, even my family say I play my cards close to my chest. Yeah. So it's it's really tough to speak out about it. But yeah. when I do, the feedback I get from other people is, is so great that, yeah, it's tough, but it's definitely worthwhile. Mm-hmm. So, 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 yeah, let's keep it with a suspense for those <laughs> that don't know what's, <laughs> what's going on, but... Um, when was the first time you had a problem in a race? Yeah, so the the very the very beginning, I guess, yeah. was um, oh gosh, twenty ten at Sprint in the Bay. It was wow. the, the very first Sprint in the Bay. Okay, I'm still crazy. I did, yeah, yeah. I, and um, it's all gone so fast. We it's had eight years ago. Yep, yeah, we had three races in a day. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, who decided to do yeah. that? God, God. <laughs> And we had uh, Maya Elm who yeah, was travelling yeah, around New yeah, Zealand yeah. at the time. Angela Simpson was a yep. top of her game. Yep. And it came to the the third race of the day mm-hmm. at Frimley Park, which is forever etched in my mind. Hate yeah. the area, uh, simply <laughs> experience. Yep. Um, and yeah, I was you know two thirds of the way through the race, mm-hmm. and uh, Frimley Park is flat as a pancake. Yep, flat and, and fast. Had, yep, long leg, straight you know across the flat. Yeah. And I suddenly started feeling really heavy in the legs, mm-hmm. and you know, not not just lactic acid heavy, yeah. but just like absolute lead. And 
I'd get to the controls and I'd feel like I was in slow motion, you mm. know, just the the stopping and turning. And um, we had a little bit through the, the rose garden at the end. And at that point, you know, my breathing got really I know, shallow and wheezy. Mm -hmm. and, and my vision started lacking in. Um, <laughs> which, you know, I had no idea what was going on, but yeah, presumably and, not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any experience with passing out, but so I think that's the the thing everyone kind of yeah. sees before they yeah, pass out, right? Yeah, start getting like tunnel vision. Kind of goes grayish and, and tunnel yeah. vision, yeah. So I, I had no idea what was going on, and I'm very stubborn by nature. Yeah, I'm like God, I'm going to finish this course. Yeah, but yeah, and Angela streaked past me. Maya streaked past me. I was just. Mm -hmm. My feet were glued to the ground. Yeah. Uh, I remember I had a a sit down, maybe other people remember, a uh, sit down in the middle of the finish shoot, mm. halfway down the finish shoot, got up and stumbled and, and, and finished. And, yeah, yeah, so but, before the line. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, two, three oh, minutes dear. after the finish, <laughs> yep. be okay. Yeah. Um, and it, that was the first time it had happened. Mm. We didn't know what it was. It did, didn't yep. go to hospital. Um, yeah. Yeah. Had a couple of puffs on someone's asthma inhaler, but it didn't make any difference. Yeah, <laughs> turns um, out it wasn't asthma. Turns out that it wasn't would have been asthma. Preferable. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, and then, but you know, went went home, had dinner, slept it off, came out the next day and raced fine. Yep. So that that was the very first time, and um, yeah, I probably had similar things. I think only two three times in the next two years so yeah. it, was, it was it was yeah is it like four years ago when it was a problem a lot of the time so yeah it's i've probably had one or two issues like that each year you yeah. know 2011 2012 um 2013 2013 i had a few more issues so from 2013 on it's it's yeah. got yeah, more and more of these experiences not not too many mm -hmm. but um a few more yeah and yeah the maybe the last year i was living in australia uh yeah people there will will have noticed that um yeah, a few races where i think there's been an aussie champs where yeah. i've had to slow down it's, it's always the, so the same sort of when thing. was the first time you actually got concerned and you thought there's there's something oh boy i mean the kind of systematically wrong gosh you asked me to dredge my memory yeah <laughs> but, um... because i think that's i mean that's what's scary for i mean people who have just faced any kind of injury at all mm. it's will this stop my sporting career and the answer is almost always no but we have yeah. this big bias that increases the the amount of time we spend thinking about the bad things yeah exactly. and we're always very concerned when there's there's a problem yeah um someone breaks a bone or they've just got yeah, some the, overuse the issue that keeps going yeah like is this the end when did you <laughs> did you have I've, that thought never, at some stage i've never thought of it as as being the end in, okay. until uh, much further down okay, the track okay yeah but um it was it's just been obviously the, the problems got bigger and bigger and uh it's it's always been this. I've seen many doctors about it. You know, yeah. each each new batch of episodes that I had, yeah. I'd see a doctor, and you know, we we tried. It wasn't asthma. Mm. It wasn't iron levels. It wasn't allergies. Um, gosh, I forget what else we looked at, and yeah. and they all started coming back to uh, stress and anxiety. Yeah, effectively. Yeah, so we're starting to head towards psychological things, which. Yeah. I mean. It, the and brain, the body, are, are, the brain is part of the body, and yeah. that's that's uh, there's a lot of things that get misdiagnosed because Absolutely. we're we're thinking in the wrong context in both directions, and yeah. everything has to be considered. But you spent a lot of time looking for psychological yeah so I mean, solutions. Yeah, so. Like you so say, each each time it's happened, I I can build up a, a list of symptoms. It's the same yeah. type of thing every time, um, but the the doctors I saw couldn't uh, couldn't line up the dots or yeah. or put a physical 
uh, point to it. So yeah, it came to, uh, I saw a, a psychologist while I was in yeah. Canberra. And I mean, it, seeing a psychologist helps in so many ways, yeah. even even if you can't Just, find uh, the root of the problem. <laughs> I think a, a lot of people who consider themselves well, you'd learn a lot oh, about yourself from a psychologist. You, yeah. yeah. So through all of this, it's I've, I've learned a hell of a lot about yeah. myself. Um, Great. But yeah, the... I guess things really started escalating when I moved to Ca- to uh, Halden. Yeah. Whether it was being in that higher pressure environment or training more. Yeah, you're fitter uh, as well. Just a, a combination of everything. And again, I just uh, couldn't find any physical reason for it. Yeah. No matter which oh, doctor man. I saw. Um, I saw a cardiologist in Canberra. Yeah. And we went through, he went through all the usual tests, came out and said, you're the healthiest heart that I've, I've seen <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so we, we came back to psychology and whether it was, you know, uh, the same kind of symptoms as a panic attack, you know, yeah. the, the whole shallow breathing, getting dizzy. Yeah. And that sort of thing. So it's it's along those lines that we're really working. Yeah. And I had a lot of a lot of people say, "Ah, just um, don't don't put too much thought on into the race. You know, yeah. it's it's just a race. Uh, you have to learn not to give a shit, effectively. Yeah. Um, but that it it to begin with, it didn't strike. I know what kind of person I am." Mm-hmm. And the attitude I've always taken to orienteering is yeah. I, I do it because I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, maybe the top level coaches don't want to hear this, but you know I, I want to go as far as I can in orienteering. Yeah. While enjoying it yeah. and while keeping the other parts of my life that I enjoy. Yeah. Performance is a proxy to having a good time. Mm. I think in a lot of cases. So it's... performance isn't the end itself for a lot of people, and it's very easy once you're in performance. To yeah. forget the fact that you're actually doing the sport because you love it. Exactly. Ultimately. And the better and, you do, um, the more you enjoy it. It's, yeah, when when I start on, when I stand on the start line, yeah, yeah. I've, I'd got the nerves for mm. sure. Yeah. But. You'd be crazy if you yeah, did I'd be crazy if I didn't. <laughs> but yeah. at the end of the day, it's, it's just a race. Yeah. You know, uh, no one's going to judge me by the results list. No one's going to remember the results list and, you know. A year, a month, even a week's time. So we do it because we enjoy it. So to me, it it didn't quite line up that I was having this physical response yeah. simply from from anxiety or stress yeah. because I wasn't setting that yeah. much on on each race. That's right. Um, mm. And what was, except for that, the last time, <laughs> 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 yep. you know what I mean. Yep. Um, except for that, what was the worst occurrence in a race. Oh boy. Um, so I've uh, I've had trouble pretty much each big relay that I've done. And right. By, so by that I mean Tia Mila. yeah, Eukla Venla and Eukla, yeah. Tia Mila. Yeah. Um. So the the first big relay I ran for for Holden. Yeah. Um. Was Tia Mila in twenty fifteen, and I I had no issues. Yeah. I can't tell you why. Yep. I, I ran for the international women's team in the men's race. Aside from being sleep deprived in the slow motion, I, I had no issues. Okay. Um, uh, but then came Eucla the same year. Yep. And I was running first leg. And by the time I'd got to the first control, I was having yeah, breathing issues. Uh, if if I didn't uh, back off, I was getting the vision. <sighs> And of course, yeah, I'm, I'm running some... first leg for... Seems to be there's less oxygen somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Mm. We're running first leg for, I mean, even the Holden second team. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, I've got, to, I've got to finish this. Mm. So I, I battled through, you know, over an hour. And I, one, one of my teammates said, you know, her reaction was, you know, oh, first up, oh, Lizzie's made a mistake. Yeah. Shit, yeah, you know, this yeah, happens. Yeah. Oh, she's made two mistakes. Yeah. This, this is... Bad. And then then she GPS. started getting angry because uh, she's lost her so it. much time. And then then she uh, went to oh shit, this is bad. Like what's yeah. what's actually happened to her? And that was one of the the toughest races I've been through because I was struggling the whole way. Yeah. 
I and the pressure of the team in the relay as well. How much was that going through your head? Yeah, I mean, I know these girls a hell of a lot better okay. now. I know yep. that they're, they've they been fantastic to me yep. over the last years, but I was new to the club then. Yeah. And yeah, for sure. It's, like, oh, I can't, it's just terrible to let people down. Can't it, let these guys it down. It does not feel good, yeah. yeah. I mean, now I know that, again, they, they don't give a shit about the result yep. compared to the well-being of a teammate. Yeah. But um, no, in the moment, yeah, sure. it's, there's a lot of... A lot of but, negativity. Yeah, so I think the... Yeah. What have I been running... This is my fourth year running the big relays for Holden. And um, this is the, the first year I've got through without any problems. Cool. <laughs> um, but in previous years, I've yeah. I've passed out uh, at least two times in yeah. big relays. Possibly a third time. <laughs> uh, the thing is, when yeah. when you pass out and you come to, you don't really know that's yeah, happened. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, and I've had to walk the finish shoot. Yep. Um, pretty much every time, and that yep. that is a huge mental challenge. Yeah. When I know that's that's what I've had to do to physically get to the the finish. Yeah. Um, and you feel like you've got thousands of people watching you. They are. <laughs> Well, you think they are, well, but okay, you're and people actually don't notice. very anonymous out there. Yeah. It's in the nicest way. You've you've got to learn that not everyone's watching. Okay. You. Not yep. everyone really cares what's but happening. Man, it feels like know. it. Feels but it like feels they're like watching, it. Yeah. But I mean, that's that's one of the mental things that I've been through and and that was learned, helpful. learned a lot. Yeah. So it was O-Ringen, was it? O-Ringen last year. Last year. Yeah. And you finished the course. Yes. But you were ha- you were having some trouble towards the end of the race. Yes. And you punched the finish. You had you, you got you got down I the finished. finish line. So we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> you got further than I finished. You I often wasn't. Do, but... I wasn't in the results at the end of the day. But I got myself yeah. added to the results a couple of days later. Okay. Was well, that because you downloaded. hadn't punched the download? No, I collapsed between the finish and the download. There we go. Yeah. I've got the exact location. <laughs> And this wasn't just the down and back up. This this was this different from south previous times. Very quickly. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. We don't want this podcast going too long. <laughs> but the background is I, I did not have a fun time at World Champs last year. Yep. It was a big struggle. I mean, yep. I'd last year I'd made big steps and good mm-hmm. progress mentally. Yep. But it wasn't making any yeah. much difference. There's a, when there's a physical cause, physical. there's only so much you can do. The, with the, the difference the it did make was that when I was struggling physically, I felt okay to back off, mm-hmm. um, and I felt I now feel you know I, I am a stubborn person, and before I was proud that I'd never yeah. DNF'd. These days, I I am proud that mm-hmm. I DNF when I have to. Yeah. Um, Prioritizing so I, your health. Yeah. So yeah. the the same thing. What was horrible i had mm. one of these horrific days at the relay again yep. where i had to walk about half of the course yeah um and after walk i thought there's no way i'm going to world games yep i need to back off so i i swapped with kate morrison she was yep. fantastic um jumped in yeah yep. and we we actually did a, a full-on swap so she was going to go to o-ring and and I was cool. going to and go you did games, O-ring and, which and is really swapped. great orienteering, yeah. but there's not that pressure. I thought, fantastic no holiday orienteering, yep. camp with the club. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the first day I, I went out there, it was a hot day. Yeah. I fairly cruised around. Yeah. Um, I, you know, Hauske Norberg came flying past. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's all right. <laughs> she flies past even you when know, you're going yeah, past. Yeah, let's be honest, <laughs> that's common day occurrence. Yeah. Um... Lillian Forsgren caught me up towards the end. Yeah. And I tucked in behind her. Yeah. And uh, felt fine. Sprinted down the finish. Cool. I uh, rounded the corner to the, the finish flag. Uh, I was like, oh, it's fantastic. Can't look at me. I'm sprinting a finish shoot. Yeah, this never happens. This is brilliant. <laughs> I saw the, the finish flag, and that's kind of when it went, oh, holy crap, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to yeah. be okay. And you get that kind of jolt of excitement. Yeah. yeah? Um, punched the finish. Uh, patted Lily on the back. Yeah. You know, thanks for leading me through the last few controls. Yeah. And suddenly, a uh, massive dizziness and yep. blackness coming in from the sides. Yeah. I, I remember thinking, oh, well, here we go again. And then uh, out. Yeah. Um, and the, the difference this time is that I, well, obviously, uh, I had a recollection of 
blacking out. That's yep. not usual. Okay. Um, but this time, yeah, it was a big struggle to to come back. Yeah. Um, yeah, and inst- instead of just going in and out like normal, it was uh, yeah, there was there was some pretty freaky stuff going on in my mind. Yeah. And uh, eventually, I came back with glimpses of vision. Yeah. Uh, I could recognize uh, one of the ladies from my club and concentrated on holding her hand and yep. focusing on that and getting my vision back and yep. uh, eventually I could hear what was yeah hear what was going on around me yeah um and so I'm I'm not a I'm not disused to having medics crowded around me yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, this was obviously a lot yeah. more serious. So this time your heart went into ventricular fibrillation. Yeah. Is that the right one? Which That's is one. pretty much as close it's, to stopped as you can get it's without the being stopped. It's precursor to a cardiac arrest. Yeah. 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 So borderline alive for. Yeah. So. Not, do you know how long you were you were out for? I haven't looked too closely into yeah. it. Yeah. I've got yeah. the records. I could figure it out. But, yeah. Um, so this kickstarts yeah, so a, a the, worthwhile investigation. Finally, after this, all these this years, this really kickstarts it. So yeah. the thing is, with, yeah, it was ventricular fibrillation, but yeah. uh, we didn't know that for another maybe right. six weeks right. after. Right, yeah, until the data so, comes um, back. But yeah, they knew your it was your heart. So it was a heart. They, yeah. I collapsed. Yeah. Again, I, I got all this in the hospital later. Yeah. You know, it was about an hour where I was just wondering, why the hell is my chest hurting so much? Yeah. When they took me away on a stretcher, it yeah. felt like one of those little comedy scenes, where, you know, where the stretcher like hits every bump. Right. Because I was just feeling every little jolt that we got, I just had this oh, like, stabbing okay. pain. And I was yeah, like, oh, yeah. man, they've, they've tied me a bit tight mm. to the stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it, I collapsed uh, the... The arena doctors, I mean, O-Ringen, I've got, I've got to say, O-Ringen's fantastic. Right, yeah, there's a they, they had very something well-oiled like, machine, eh? Something like so 50 good. defibrillators <laughs> around the arena and the courses. They had people with me uh, within the minute. Thank you, O-Ringen. Yeah, if, if you're going to collapse, <laughs> I recommend O-Ringen. Cool. Um, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but the, the arena doctor was there. They couldn't mm-hmm. feel my pulse or my breathing. Mm. So they started CPR straight away. Um, they had an automatic defibrillator. So yep. they, they put that on me. It recorded my heart rhythm or arrhythmia. L- lack, or of. lack of. <laughs> oh dear. And it gave me a, a jolt, which mm. I remember nothing of. Good. Good. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they continued CPR. Yeah. Uh, until I came fully around. Cool. And you ended up in hospital. Doctors uh, yeah. did their two days in diagnosis. The, um, the doctors they were unsure. We couldn't get the record straight off the defibrillator. Okay. So they they played it safe, but they you know they did the echo. Yeah. They put me on a bike test. They observed me for two days, and then they they deemed me fit at least to go home. Okay. Said don't do any strenuous exercise. Yeah. Uh, released me from hospital. Little did they know they released me from hospital um, the same time as uh, the O-Ring and Sprint was starting. And uh, team parking for the elites was in the hospital car park. All right. So <laughs> straight out. Straight out of hospital. Uh, same time as everyone was arriving with, the their, with their bags. Yeah. Oh, I could yeah. go straight into quarantine. <laughs> they said no exercise. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, back to back to Orion, cool. back into my little two person tent, which yeah. I don't think the doctors realised either. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then back to Norway. Yeah. Yep. And when did they figure out what exactly was wrong? So, yeah, it took six weeks to mm-hmm. get the the record from the defibrillator. Yeah. That got sent to Sweden. So we, then they it got were, sent to Norway. There was no other diagnosis they were going to do. Just get wait for um, the, I mean, my, an anxious wait. <laughs> yeah, my GP in Halden is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, and she got me in touch with the hospital in Norway, mm-hmm. and they started all the regular uh, cardiac tests again. So, yep. yeah, the the echoes, the bike tests. They got me lined up for an MRI. Yeah. Um, MRI didn't show anything. Uh, we ordered a CT test, but mm-hmm. hadn't heard back. 
And it was at that point, yeah, six, six, eight weeks later, the record from the defib came back. And yeah, we're, yeah. Uh, then then things really cool. got so that excited. was the data that was the useful data yeah it was eight yeah. horrible weeks of waiting yeah um massive range of emotions you like yeah. almost died and no one can tell uh, you why uh, you know what? fear anger yeah uh, just depression yeah. name the emotion i went yeah through. yeah yeah wow um all the time not not being able to exercise strenuously. Yeah, as well. Like your whole lifestyle has just been your doctor's. Yeah, like, just I was on stop being lizzy for on a while. Sick leave, so I didn't even have work to distract me. Right. So it's a lot of soul searching. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there was the point, you know, when when we figured it was ventricular fibrillation, and I got a phone call firstly from the hospital saying, "Oh, look, we figured it out. We've referred you to the main hospital in Oslo, the specialists." Mm-hmm. You'll hear from them. Uh, I got a call from them saying, yep, uh, we want you in here 9 a.m. next Monday. Uh, good. Be, be, be <laughs> prepared is to good. stay two or three days. Okay. So I had yeah. the, again, I was I was scared out of my mind. I was yeah. living by myself. Um, I have fantastic people that I can reach out to mm-hmm. in Halden, but just my nature, I find it hard to reach out. Yep. Um. And it was it was that weekend, you know, I I went for a run, mm-hmm. not not strenuous. Yeah, I was, I was back jogging just for my own peace sanity, of mind. Sanity, it feels yeah, good. Sanity. Yeah. And um, yeah, you know, a lot of soul searching. I I remember standing there looking out over Hull and I realized, look, I've had a pretty damn good career. I've had a lot of fun. Oh, okay, I've, I've come third in a home World Cup. I've I've seen the the grins of the people that yep. got me here. If if I can't race again, yep. well, then it was I don't great. Know, it I was don't great, know if I'm okay it? with that, yeah. but yeah, I, I can live with that. You know, yeah. there's there's other things I can do. Yep. yep. If if I've had my my turn of racing, yep. then so be it. Yep. Um. Yeah. So I, it's nice to to reach that. Yeah. Realize you're satisfied. There's other things. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's it's sad to put something down, but if need be. Yeah, but yeah. that's not the way it went. We did get no. a second chance. So, yeah. What exactly was wrong in your heart? So, yeah, I, I went to my hospital appointment, and um, they they gave me an angiogram, mm-hmm. which is where they they put something into your. I'm going to get it wrong because it's my. <laughs> <laughs> they they put a cathode in your wrist and they yep. wire it through to your heart. Up it goes. Yeah, it feels really weird. They oh, give, you, give you some I morphine can feel it. to like. Oh, that's gross. Calm you down. <laughs> oh, it's not the grossest thing I went through. I don't. <laughs> uh, and it's cool. You got the X-ray there. Yeah. And you can see the fluid coming out, the dye. Yeah, that's and really it, cool. And it shows them uh, where the blood is flowing yep. around your heart. Yep. And uh, straight away, I could hear the doctors behind the screen yep. going, oh, rah, 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 rah. muttering away in English, yeah. uh, in Norwegian, or Norwegian. So Norwegian, you don't know. They, they were excited enough. <laughs> excited, okay. I tell you what, my it's medical a... Norwegian is a yeah. hell of a lot better now. <laughs> yeah, this, they were excited, and yeah. the guy was like, the one guiding the case, oh yeah, yeah we found something. He's like, mm, I figured that. Yeah. Suddenly, my body tenses up. Yeah. Things get painful because I tensed up. Yeah. <laughs> they gave me more morphine. Oh. Um. Yeah, so they they discovered that uh, my left coronary artery yep. uh, came out of my aorta in the wrong place. Okay. And it's it's been like that since birth. Yeah. Um, and the, the crux of the problem is... Uh, where's the camera? I don't know. So yeah. say that's, that's my aorta. Yeah. Uh, the left coronary artery was coming out about here. Okay. And then running along inside the wall of the aorta... So it's kind of double wrapped. It's it's There's, wrapped around the aorta yeah. a bit, yeah. And then it turned a ninety degree bend. Okay. And it left the aorta about where it should. Okay, but is it like restricted, constricted yeah. in that? So the the problem that was that when when I run, mm-hmm. when I'm yeah, when I'm stressed, and yep. pushing hard, uh, the aorta dilates, mm-hmm. and you've got your pulmonary artery that's also sitting like up here. Okay. That dilates. Yeah. And my left coronary artery was getting squashed between right. the two. So com- completely... Right. You know, and... So the harder your heart works, yeah, so, the you know, less oxygen gets to the rest of your body, including much. your brain. And that's why the, you're the, seeing 
the yeah. heavy legs and the vision this closing in. And... Yeah, so when, when things were getting fuzzy and yeah. my arms were getting heavy, I guess the, the artery was getting constricted yeah. a bit. Uh, if I kept pushing, yeah. you know, if I backed off, it uh, contracted again yeah. and things were fine. If I kept pushing too far, then yeah, the blood flow got completely cut off mm -hmm. and either I passed out or at O-Ringen took it a bit further and uh yeah know. and your heart just didn't have enough oxygen or yeah i'm not yeah. quite sure on the, uh, the I'm medical not, details i'm not, not going to say but... anything on video because i'll get it wrong yeah <laughs> yeah but it's but, bad yeah. that's bad not good we don't want that listen I cool so when were you on the table yeah so uh i got diagnosed on oh, tuesday yep um Surgeon came in, said, I've cleared a space for you in my schedule next Monday. You can do Monday. it now. Oh, no, no, next Monday, next Monday. Wheeled straight off. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> fantastic. I really appreciate it. Um, I have a feeling one of my parents might want to be here for this. Yeah, okay. Can you delay it a couple of days? Yeah. Um, so they can get here from yeah, New Zealand. Okay. So the we Wednesday after, I was on the operating table. Yeah. Yeah. Man, and... They've got to get in there somehow, so they. Yeah, oh, so they can, people can probably see the the scar yeah, even sorry, if you're on yeah. the camera. Yeah, you can see the top. Of I it, mean, they've it, got to. It goes right down. Open you up and. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, that's the brutal bit. Yeah, I mean, really, the, isn't it? The thing was, it, it didn't even cross my mind because yeah. the the doctors were really positive. They were mm -hmm. amazing. They're like, well, we found the problem. It's yeah. fixable. Um, once it's fixed, you can effectively do whatever you want. There's no medical reason yeah. why you shouldn't be able to. I was like, of course, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. But yeah, open heart surgery is it's it's not a small thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, Ooh. to I mean, I, I don't like thinking about it in too much detail, but yeah, yeah. they they've got to break <laughs> break through your your sternum. Yeah. To get to the heart. Yeah. They've they've got to, you know, they put you on a machine that breathes and pumps your blood for mm -hmm. you, um, while they do their thing. Yeah. And then. Once once you're stitched up, it takes a hell of a long time for firstly the the bone to heal. Anything and that's then attached, all the other muscles that have been anything that's attached to it is oh. agony. Yeah. Um. And then there's you know there's a hell of a lot of healing to go on inside. Yeah. And that's that's just the physical, not the mental. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, but you woke up, you're back together. Yeah. S successful operation. Doctors are optimistic. Yeah. You have to be pulling some Operation optimism from them. went fantastic. Cool. Yeah. And obviously, it's still going fantastic because you <laughs> race walk yesterday. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's Was something... that your first big race since the operation? Um, I've So, I've run the, your biggest the relays. Race. I've run the big relays this year, mm -hmm. but it's something that I wouldn't have... Well, I didn't dare to even think about at yeah, the start of the year yeah baby steps so it's, yeah, very very baby i remember <laughs> yeah. my first steps after the operation yeah everything is so very grateful for a lot of things after that i mean this is definitely a bonus world champs but yeah. holy crap i mean anything from the start yeah. of this year onwards is is a bonus yeah effectively that's cool it's a complete second that's cool. chance that's cool right yeah. so how do you, how does one start training again from that point onwards is uh, it just like an unfit person starting to train again or are there parts of you that are you know really strong and ready to move on but there's other parts that yeah, it's really are funny. really I mean, really behind yeah so i my operation was um start of october so it's yes. yeah 10 10 months ago and the very very baby steps just mm -hmm. walking at first and uh you get 12 weeks of cardiac rehab training, which I absolutely what loved. You cardiac it rehab? It was beautiful. It was... Um, what is that even? Oh, again, it, it varies country yeah. to country, but I mean, oh man, the Norwegian public health system is the <laughs> best in the world. But um, yeah, it was, it was me and generally a load of 60-year-old, uh, mainly guys, a few, few like women. Like heart attack. They've, they've had heart Most of well. them have had, yeah, stents stro put strokes, in. Maybe. So there were maybe 12 yeah. in the class yeah. and maybe three of us that had open heart and the rest have had stents. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a mix of, like, aerobics. It's, it's like you'd expect granny aerobics yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's so bands. It was, no, nah, no, yeah. no <laughs> bands, like, but The stereotypical like, image, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like with the yeah, we've, I found some pretty classic um, yeah. gifs and memes that are... 
yeah. pretty spot on. But it was, it was a lot cool. of fun. Yeah. And the, the other patients are fantastic. And at what stage did you felt like you were on a running training program so again my, after oh, operation? No, I still don't feel like I'm on a training program. Okay. Wow, you just <laughs> raced walk yesterday. Yeah. I'll, and not I'll, slow either. Yeah. Well, then... Didn't feel fast either. No, well... <laughs> no, um, I, wow. I went for my first run just before Christmas. Yeah. Christmas Eve, I think. Yeah. Nice present. Sweet. Um, and you've been just ramping up cautiously... Very cautiously. So, like I said, I mean, the legs felt good from pretty early on. There's yep. Nothing's happened to the legs. Yeah. I was very lucky that I didn't need a bypass, so they mm-hmm. didn't need the artery or anything from my legs or from yep. my uh, medical terms. Yeah. Um. So that was fine, but it's obviously, I mean, your your upper body has been through a massive trauma. There's there's nothing in your upper body that's unaffected. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. So some big cuts. It was very much you know, I try try one thing, wait. Yeah. See how it feels. Try again. Yeah. And it it's been like that for for six months, you know. To yeah. begin with it was try one day. See what yeah. happens next. Then it's been okay, I can I can run two days in mm. a row, but then I need three days off to yeah. recover. And Constantly reevaluating. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So now you know. Now I can, if I don't think about it, I can go about six days running. But then cool. I need a good long break. Yeah. Um, yeah. And. Sweet. So how was it getting up to race speed? Maybe not the same uh, race speed you've been up to some years ago, but it's it's y- been a f- you're at. Pretty close to a race intensity. I saw you racing yesterday. You were going the same pace as, as many other The, the top first girls. time that I ran intervals. Yeah. Or um <laughs> sprint races. Always hurts that first time. Oh, it's indescribable. It's, it's mm-hmm. such a freedom to to run without the yeah. tightness in the chest, without I wouldn't say without the fear that anything's yeah. gonna happen because obviously I've my my body and my brain has all of these pretty horrible memories. Yeah. And so they they still come up. Mm-hmm. So that's the the mental side is building confidence yeah. in my body again that oh, I'm fixed now. Yeah. And that's that's getting there. The first time I raced, well raced, I was in a competition was um, Norwegian trials for for European champs. Mm-hmm. And the the first times like there you know I'd, I'd get to a point in the course of like this is where i'd start having trouble before. right and then you're thinking about yeah and the for, for and 20 seconds i'd be like um oh, but actually i feel fine yeah i can i can keep going right it's no so problem it's going to take many races till you can push through that without that thought that habitual yeah. thought coming um, back i'm getting to the point now that i mean for example the race yesterday obviously it, it didn't even occur to me mm-hmm. i mean i was nervous as hell beforehand yeah like i think anyone but you were thinking about race nerves and it wasn't until after the race that i looked back and i was like you know that that bit in the park yeah i would not have been able to do that a year ago yeah it it had got to the point just where like you're pushing up to 100 percent, and that would have been yeah i mean even even running a sprint relay yeah i i couldn't do that last year yeah i had got to the point that's that's not good for me yeah it's it's too hard it's yeah. like pretty yeah, much it's, guaranteed it's not gonna healthy. have a problem yeah. it's it's 98 yeah. percent sure that i'd i'd have a major problem yeah running it. so it's yeah it's just an amazing freedom to be back and to to be able to push hard and feel the pain in my legs and yeah. my breathing rather than in my chest yeah and, uh, yeah massive relief yeah wow so you've done Walk yesterday. What else is on the schedule for you this week? Yeah, so it's <laughs> far too much for a heart. Patient. Too much for post op. <laughs> nah, I've got um... the the middle distance tomorrow. Yeah, I look forward to the the relay. Yeah, will be good fun, and the the long distance. You are... will be a battle of attrition. Okay, so um, you are starting. I'm starting the long. Starting the long. I'll finish. Let's see how let's see how it goes. I'll it might finish, be slow, but. Uh, but might take a picnic with me yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so tough and yeah. and you, you're relaxed about that you're yeah yeah i mean there's this year there's no pressure on, on you post-op yeah um and yeah, so i have 
I'm just enjoying being mm-hmm. in the forest. There's no expectations yeah. either from me or from other people. So it's, yeah. it's just no, it's, go out and enjoy it. Yeah, everyone's it, stoked to have you here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just to be back in this atmosphere. Yeah. And and to be honest, to feel the... You know, I've, I've come to Latvia before now. Yeah. Like I said, I, I, there's been no training program. I've yeah. just been doing what I feel like. I haven't felt the motivation to prepare for walk per se yeah um it's only once i've got to latvia and you, you start getting the the walk feelings and you get in the forest and like oh man i wish i i kind of wish i knew this forest better than i do <laughs> wow you'll be back i can see oh, yeah, yeah. if you want to have so a good experience this year exactly um there'll be a training block you'll still this be racing year's... for holden in the foreseeable future yeah yeah this cool. year's all about building up good experiences yeah uh Maybe relishing trying to the overwrite good some of those exactly. those habits and those thought patterns Rewire that come back. The thought yeah, patterns yeah. And uh yeah, just slowly build things up again. Uh, slowly, but you know, most people wouldn't call running. Yeah, running, so. yeah, there's but, um context dependence uh, the on, on a lot of those words. Country, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those words. Yeah. Great. Well, best of luck for Thanks. The rest, uh, yeah. <laughs> rest of your goes. walk on on your new body, Lizzie 2.0. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of people back home hoping that in the next few years we can see you back up to that top 10 that you yeah, you had so many years good. ago. Yeah. We don't know what's possible now. We don't know how much you were held no. back by the heart, the heart yeah, problems I mean, in the previous a, layers. A lot of people have come and said, oh, man, see new what you do on a broken heart. New like, expectations. Imagine what you can do on a, yeah. on a fixed. Yeah. And so I, I jokingly said this to the doctor and he, he just flat turned around to me and was like, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll see. But uh, cool. anything's, uh, it's, it's a bonus and it's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. And thanks for taking the time to share. Cheers. Best of luck for yeah, man. the rest of the week. Look forward to it.